Nightwing issue 94, Tom Taylor and Geraldo Borges on the art. So, not redondo this issue. And the art's not bad, but it's not redondo. And you, you feel that. It, that one is pretty good, though. Like, it does a good job of at least feeling like it's part of the run and whatever else. It's not... It's not this... Oh, it's uh, not terrible, no. Yeah, it's... You know, it's, 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 you know, certainly, I would assume the colorist might be the same and things like that, because it, it definitely feels like it's keeping the same palette. Uh, Adriana Lucas on colors, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this issue is... Uh, Dick and Babs and Melinda are trying to... Basically, catch out the, the corrupt commissioner, right? Because the corrupt commissioner, they scare him into going on the run because they say, "Oh yeah, by the way, the the the, the police of the, the, the corrupt cops who were arrested for the the thing at the at Haven, they've named you. They're coming. The authorities are coming. You have to get out. There's a an airport ticket booked for you. And make sure make sure you take your incriminating files with you. You yeah. don't want to leave those behind. Now I'm sure there's a lot of truth to all this, but of course there's a they are doing this intentionally so a dick can come in and his wingsuit and you know, steal these files, get all the evidence so they can look into what uh, Blockbuster's been doing and all other shenanigans. So we get this very fun action sequence, which is very well drawn. It's got a lot of good motion to it. Uh, you know, Dick's throwing his sticks at the, the bakes and... Uh, the things that I felt were missing in terms of what we've come to expect with Redondo's style on this book are things in this action sequence. Like, there's none of those... Um, uh, yeah, he's been doing those little, little like close-up panels where the color fades. You know, it's all like what Sorrentino does. We're all like in the middle of the action, or be do like a close-up small box on like the stick flying through the air or something like that. Uh, there was kind of none of that here, and that, this is where I felt like, okay, this is a filling artist. Yeah, but I think that's kind of selling it a little bit short because it's actually a very well-drawn sequence. It is, it is, and we just want to say it's still good. But I felt that it wasn't redone. I felt that it was different. I felt that it was lacking in that extra flair that, that well, I'm used to on this book. Yeah, but I just, I, I, just, I wouldn't want to start it so negatively because it's like, it's a really well drawn sequence that flows immaculately. So, I mean, this still flows wonderfully, you know, when Dick like jumps off the motorbike and the car crashes into it and he's like sort of like gliding over the top of the car. You know, there's a lot of motion, there's a lot of sense of spectacle. Mm. Uh, it's all very good stuff. Uh, the issue does go on quite quickly because the first half of it's this big chase scene. Um, but yeah, so the guy gets arrested. Uh, they put in a new commissioner in Bluthaven, and it is Margaret Sawyer from Metropolis. So it's like, oh, okay, that's yeah. an interesting pull. We'll see how that goes. Um, and then we shift to Blockbuster, who's not very happy about this, and he complains to Melinda about it in a minute. Uh, but he, you know, he's, he tells his henchman dude uh, that. You shouldn't ask questions. And this is important because it kind of comes into something a little bit later. Uh, but he's uh, he's upset and he's going to go talk to Melinda. Uh, he's he's upset about uh, this new commissioner. He's upset because he's pretty sure someone warned Dick Grayson before they attacked his building. So they, they've got a rat. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of tension here where you think, oh, he knows it's her. He knows it's her. You know, this is like, he's taking her off. Is she in danger? Is this all that? Um... So it's a good bit of tension. It does a good job of like building this tension and thinking she's in uh, in trouble. Um, and I do love that this is Blockbuster kind of looking back at the last couple of like arcs and going, hmm, you know, my city's changing. All of a sudden, Dick, Dick Grayson's making all these moves. Someone's clearly working against me from the inside. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's him kind of... So it, it really did a good job of like continuing this feeling of like the story of the city and the story of like all the various like pl big players in the city are an important part of the run. Uh, but he thinks the, the henchman from earlier is the one who is the rat. And because Melinda is not uh, actually evil, she wants to help him and get him out once Blockbuster leaves the scene, so she calls Dick. Uh, but immediately this guy's an asshole and just starts, you know, he blasts her with his powers and just starts yelling for Blockbuster. So the cliffhanger is that they know she's the rat and they've got her unconscious and... You know, Dick's, Dick and Babs hear enough of it over the phone that they know she's in trouble. So that, that's kind of your, your big cliffhanger for, for next issue. Yeah. If it wasn't for the one panel of Blockbuster when he walks back into the room saying, what the hell? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for that one little line, I would have assumed he was, you know, this was all a setup to, to see if she would take the bait. Like, he, he maybe suspected her the whole time. Because mm. the guy, you know, he breaks out of those restraints and uses his powers pretty easily, right? Yeah. So, you know, up until I was like, ah, oh, ah, oh, this, this, this is his plan. He, you know, 
he's trying to, you know, see if, see what she'll do. But I don't know, the, the one panel where he comes in, kind of confused as to what's going on, is, is the one thing that makes me think maybe not. Yeah, I, I do... I wonder if this is going to piss him off more next issue, though, that he didn't even see this coming. Like, the idea that, <laughs> like, she actually did convince him and trick him is just going to enrage him even more. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think there's there's a potential there with that. Um, it's very much an issue of two halves. You've got like a little. Uh, there's a couple of pages in the middle with Dick and Babs being kissy whilst they're uh, looking over all these incriminating files and getting excited about taking down Blockbuster. Uh, and Haley try to eat the incriminating files, which would yeah. be awkward. But and then it it's straight onto the the Blockbuster, Melinda stuff. Yeah, but it's, it's 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 very much the first half is this big action sequence, so you get a lot of your action fill from that. Um, Nightwing getting to be a little cocky, taking in this corrupt guy. So is this just desserts kind of side of things? And then the second half of the issue is like really well put together in that it builds up this this tension of like, okay, we start on her and then we sort of introduce, you know, Blockbuster's with her mother and she comes in and he's sitting next to her and it's like, oh, is, is the mother, like, is he kind of meant to be threatening here? Is he implying that the mother's going to be in danger if she doesn't do what he says? There's a lot of that sort of stuff going on, and it just it's it's really well built to kind of build this story in the back half. I particularly like the part where one of the inciting incidents for this attitude, where he's really like trying to figure this out now, is that heartless. He's really pissed off that this heartless villain just walked into his headquarters and like you know tried made a go at him. Yeah, even if he did throw him out a window, because he's like, no, the fact that someone was willing to try that means that we don't feel as strong or don't look as strong or or, or we aren't as considered as strong to everyone as we should be. And he isn't late looking weak. He wants to be big and scary, so no he's, one would ever dare definitely... challenge him overcompensating a little bit isn't he yeah, yeah. In, in reaction to what's going on i think that's good I think, I think it gives this this version of blockbuster layers like i'm getting a lot of like good writing from him here where yeah he's big and cartoony and he's this you know hulking evil dude but there, there's elements to this here where it's like some of his motivations are actually quite intricate and they're, they're doing a good job of setting them up yeah there was there was a moment i think it was last issue i think it was unless it was unless it was in this issue i'm, I'm kind of blurring them together it was when dick talks to the commissioner he's like hey you know at least you know with blockbuster you know i, I expect that, oh no it is in this one That's the know, point, the, yeah. yeah where he's like you know i, I know what he is uh, you know i can respect not respect that but at least i know what i'm getting you know you you disappoint me more because you're you know, meant to be better than that i think that's kind of like a lot of you know, t- tell me about you know, the approach to blockbuster here is yeah he is that and he's kind of open about being that but he is interesting at the same time he's not just that you know you know one thing he's not pretending to be other things but he has got layers to it yeah and i, I felt that in this this uh the, pretty much all these scenes in this back chunk of the issue so i'm curious to see what his reaction is to at least this accusation uh and he'll probably believe it uh basically because i think does he pick up the phone at the end I he does remember. yeah, yeah. And he, he he says something to to dick yeah so like he, he doesn't have to question it he knows this is true uh, so I'm curious to see what his like, proper reaction to this is when he's actually one-on-one with her. Uh, and obviously it sets up this great, like, th- they have to find her. They have to find out where they took her to, to try and save her, you know? So it, it gives us a very simple, thrilling premise for next issue, if that, you know, if that's what we're going. Unless we skip ahead, maybe, till, uh, you know, whenever. It's, it's possible, but I, I would suspect next issue is the rescue issue. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think that's exciting. Um, and it's that sort of thing where you know something bad's going to happen because, you know... Th- Last issue was very cathartic when they took down all the police and sort of made a laughing stock out of them. And then this issue, taking down the corrupt commissioner, it's like, okay, everything's too good, everyone's too happy, <laughs> like something bad is about to happen, and give us some jeopardy. And sure enough, this is this is what it is. So, uh, yeah, really solid. Like, yeah, obviously Redondo is a better artist, but like, I still thought the art in this was really good. And no, oh, it's still good. All right, what are you giving the issue ninety four? Uh, I'm gonna give it an eight. Uh, I think it's it's very good. Uh, art is still really good, but it's just missing that extra flair that would have pushed it up into like eight point five or a nine. Yeah, I'll, I'll go eight point five, but I, I would uh, say yeah, Redondo, if Redondo was on this issue, it'd probably be a nice, comfortable nine. But uh, as it is, I'll I'll give it eight point five. Still very good. Still giving layers. Still progressing the story, and it still feels like a run that's all pop, you know. To sound pretentious for a second, it sounds like it's all one big tapestry as opposed to just 
you know, a series of arcs that are just independent kind of thing. I've started to hate that word. <laughs> so it's a tapestry. Like, uh... It's all part of the tapestry, it's fine, don't worry about it. Oh, piss off.